In today's lesson, Larry pursues schooling bass in a small reservoir in central Texas. It's a waiting game. Keeping eyes open and scanning the water 360 degrees is important. It's an exciting visual style. Casting to groups of fish you can see and watching the strike happen right before your eyes. Let's join Larry as he searches for breaking fish in today's lesson, Back to School. George, I got him that time. Oh, he feels good, too, on this little old light tackle. Oh, he's not a big one, but he'll do. Well, look at him. Well, look at him. What in the world? I think one of his buddies come up there and hit my spinnerbait. In fact, I swear I see one. Wow! That's the craziest bass I've ever caught. He comes up there and he acts like nothing's wrong and then all of a sudden charges out of there. Yeah, schooling bass. I can go for some of that. Boy, I love it when they get up on top and start chasing them shad. That's something that happens a lot in the, in the late summer and fall of the year after you have a big shad hatch. Them bass come off the bottom and they start running them shad and the only way you can catch them is on a little top water bait that looks like a shad or a, a little bitty spinner. Well, I can go for some of that. Now, a lot of times when they're schooling, the best thing to do is just sit there and look around and watch for them to jump. Sometimes they'll have key little areas that they come up in all the time and that's what I try to get established. If they're breaking in one area, then I'm gonna get close. There's some right there. Throw that thing in there and just wake it right through them. I mean, that little old spinner bait, they cannot stand that. Well, here comes another one of them just sliding across the top. Back in the old days, we had a horsed him right on in here. Come on. What's the matter? You didn't want to waste no energy on fight? You want to just go back out there and chase Shad? Is that where you want to have your fun? Fine with me. I tell you, you got to be real careful when you're around schooling bass because just as sure as you make a big long cast out there and, and try to do something fancy, there'll be 50 of them come up right beside the boat and there you'll be way off out there. So just sit around and be patient and watch for them. You're behind, you're behind. Good shot. Look at them hogs. <laughs> there is a fish. Look at them schooling. Look at them right there. Now, isn't that something? Oh, my, that was my bass there. That wasn't one after a shad. This is unreal. This is the kind of fishing you don't run into very often. Come on up here. I'm ready to get out there and get me another one. Now, nah, don't be so mean. Good grief, that is a nice schooling bass right there. Look at him. Come here, mate. Ow, ow, ow. Couldn't stand my little old bitty pro model, could you? Look too much like a minnow. Doggone, I need to retie and I ain't got time. I was late. One of the most important things in fishing, breaking fish, you know, I see a lot of people a lot of times and they say, well, they're schooling everywhere and I can't catch them. The thing to catch schooling bass is when, is, is remember, when they're up on top and they're, they're busting on a shad, they're excited, totally excited. So you don't want to throw past them. If you throw past them, then you give them that much time to cool down. You want to land just as close to them as you can and start that bait coming because they're excited and you can get them to hit if you'll remember that. 
get right back to that little theory of be an excellent caster, especially at long distances, because they know how far you can throw. Sometimes they think they do. They get right on the edge of where you can reach, and that's where they're going to break all the time. When fishing for breaking or schooling fish, one of the most important keys is to make an accurate cast. Place your bait right in the middle of the breaking school rather than casting past the fish and bringing your bait to them. Remember, breaking bass tend to hit a bait only while they're excited and at the surface, and this period may last only a few short moments. Oh, I'm getting aggravated, folks. And I threw behind that bunch. The wind pushed my bait away from them. Maybe they're coming this way. Ah, missed him. He missed me. Criminy. Well, if that don't beat him, ah, I got that one by George. Oh, it feels like a good one. Feels like a really good one. Where you at down there? Are you as big or are you, are you just faking me out here? You're schooling all around me and I can't do nothing about it. Look at the fish all around the boat here and I got jaws on. He won't give up. Come up. <laughs> Come here, you big outfit. You. You're not going to get away. That is a good schooling bass. I mean, now that is some kind of schooling bass right there. Come here. Ah. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, he wasn't going to get off. Thought you had your little shed, didn't you, big boy? Man, they're all around me. like to took the rod out of my hand, my hand's slick. I can't believe I missed that one. And now, here's an important Nixon note, courtesy of Stratus Boats, America's finest sport fishing boats. One of the biggest breakthroughs in fishing line is new fire line from Berkeley. This is like a high performance tool. It casts like a rocket, super sensitive, and when you set the hook on a fish, there's no stretch. But yet it's not a braid. I know a lot of you had bad problems with braids. Fire line, without a doubt, will make you a better fisherman in certain situations. You people that can't feel a bass on your Carolina rig, hey, you can throw it out of sight. If a fish thumps that bait out there, you feel him thump it. And when you set the hook, there's absolutely no stretch. You got him. Fish is great on a spinning rod. Outstanding. This is like a high performance tool. Certain types of fishing, it's gonna make you a better bass fisherman. And now, here's another important Nixon note, courtesy of Abu Garcia, Ambassador Reels, Precision Swedish Engineering. Anytime that the fish are schooling or they're in extremely shallow water and you gotta keep your bait right on top to get them to bite, when you make that cast and it hits the water, you take your finger before your spool's ever engaged and lift your rod. That'll keep your bait just barely under the surface. And as soon as you get him coming, then you can start your retrieve and you never lower that bait under the surface of the water. And I'll tell you what, there's a lot of times in bass fishing, especially with spinner baits, that if you don't start it instantly and keep it at that certain depth under the water, you won't get them to bite it. come up there and nail it. That's a pretty good one too.
Where you at down there? Good schooling bass. And boy, I mean, he is hooked. Well, I know you're not hooked that bad. I'm just not getting the right angle on it. Isn't that a pretty schooling fish? Fat, full of shad. Bent my bait trying to get it out. You notice on this on this little bait right here, see how it doesn't have very many strands in the skirt? Real little skirt. That can be extremely important in spinnerbait fishing, especially when they're chasing minnows, because if you bait very big, a lot of times they won't bite it. You gotta keep your bait small and compact. You don't want a lot of a lot of uh of silhouette there, and I, this is one of the times that I don't use a tail. If they're breaking on the surface and you're having to run it real fast right through them to get them to hit it, I see one out there, I gotta go. If you gotta run it real fast to get them to hit it, don't put a tail on it. One important point to remember when fishing for breaking fish is to keep your bait small and compact. Also, when fishing a small spinner bait near the surface and running it fast, do not use a trailer. Seen one out there about a hundred yards. Whoa! In fact, he is a big one. That is a big one. I mean, they just tore that water up there. Come on in here. I mean, this is a good one. Look at the size of that thing. That is a big bass. Gee, Christmas, what a schooling bass. Whoa. I think this must be the leader of the pack because there was about 20 of them up on top. Oh, don't you break my line. All right, that's enough. <laughs> Come here, you big galoot. Gotcha. Look at the size of that big-headed dude. Ow. That is a big old skinny bass. He thought he had him a shed when he hit that little pro model. That is a good one. Well, take off. There you go. Man, he messed up my bait. They still out there too. They're out of range. Man, them schooling bass are exciting. That's one way to really get your kids involved in bass fishing is take them out in the summertime when they're chasing them shad on top where they can see what they're throwing at. Then they know there were fish live. Got that one. See, I was quick draw. When he broke, I stuck it right in his mouth. And he is a little fella. But little fellas pull too. Come here, young man. Little basses. But I fooled him. <laughs> he tried to jump, didn't he? Where are you at then? Oh, 
you're a wild thing. <laughs> I don't know which direction to go. Good grief. You just run around like a madman. Yeah, he's a pretty fish. You know, one thing I notice, a lot of people don't know how to control spinning tackle. When you when you first learning how to fish with spinning tackle, when you throw at an object, you want to use this finger right here. After you release the line and you make your cast, you use this finger to feather that line off the top of that spool. And that's how you want to slow that thing down. And when you get past your target or wherever you want it to hit, then you just push the finger on down and stop your line. That way you'll feather it down and it'll hit the water softly out there instead of just going kabloosh. If you'll just take and use that finger to slow the bait down and then lock it down when you want it to hit. And you can just kind of ease it down at the end of your cast. Use your index finger to control the length of your cast with spinning tackle. During the cast, slowly move your index finger inward, applying resistance to the line. When you want your bait to stop, move your index finger inward until it comes in contact with the spool, thereby stopping the line. I think he's just a little one that thinks it big. Be bigger than I think he is. Some more jump. I don't know what I got down there. Either he's a bad mean one or a bad big one. Oh, he's just a bad mean one. But he's a good one. That's a beautiful schooling bass. You know, schooling bass are one of the most fun types of fishing that you can possibly do. Wished you could have been here with me today and enjoyed some of this. Come back and see me again next week and I'll teach you more about bass fishing. Nice bass.